Good morning, Chairman Peters, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Paul, Ranking Member Graham, and distinguished members of the committees. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. A critical part of the Secret Service mission is protecting our nation's current and former government leaders. The attempted assassination of former President Donald J. Trump on Saturday, July 13, 2024, in Butler, Pennsylvania, was a failure on multiple levels. I join you and all Americans in condemning the horrific assault on former President Trump, Corey Comparator, James Coppenhaver, and David Dutch. And I extend my deepest sympathies to the Comparator family and my sincere wishes for Mr. Copenhaver and Mr. Dutch's continued recovery. Before I begin, though, I want to commend the heroic actions of the men and women of the United States Secret Service on July 13th. Our special agents shielded the former president with their bodies while shots were still being fired, selflessly willing to make the ultimate sacrifice without hesitation. I am extremely proud of these actions and those taken by the counter sniper team to neutralize the threat that prevented further loss of life. And I applaud the actions of our tactical teams that responded so quickly. I would also like to express my gratitude to our federal, state, and local partners. We rely on these critical relationships, which have developed over decades of daily collaboration to secure protective events and conduct criminal investigations. As you're aware, there are multiple ongoing investigations of the attack and the security failures that occurred that day. I pledge my full support to those inquiries so the Secret Service, your committees, and the American people have a thorough and complete understanding of what happened leading up to and during July 13th. I will not wait for the results of those findings to assess where we failed that day. I have taken and will continue to take immediate steps to ensure we do not repeat those failures. Since my appointment as the acting director one week ago, I identified gaps in our security on July 13th and have implemented corrective actions. One of my first actions as acting director was traveling to the Butler Farm Show site to better understand how our protection failed. I went to the roof of the AGR building where the assailant fired shots and I laid in a prone position to evaluate his line of sight. What I saw made me ashamed. As a career law enforcement officer and a 25 year veteran with the Secret Service, I cannot defend why that roof was not better secured. To prevent similar lapses from occurring in the future, I directed our personnel to ensure every event site security plan is thoroughly vetted by multiple experienced supervisors before it is implemented. It is clear to me that other protective enhancements could have strengthened our security at the Butler event. As such, I have directed the expanded use of unmanned aerial systems at protective sites to help detect threats on roofs and other elevated threats. I've also directed resources to facilitate our protective site communications, particularly our communications with our state and local partners. In addition, I have instructed the asset request for Secret Service protective details to be approved expeditiously and have ordered the maximum use of requested personnel at protective sites to address this heightened security environment. I've heard your calls for accountability, and I take them very seriously. And given the magnitude of this failure, the Secret Service's Office of Professional Responsibility is reviewing the actions and decision-making of Secret Service personnel in the lead up to and on the day of the attack. If this investigation reveals that Secret Service employees violated agency protocols, those employees will be held accountable to our disciplinary process. With respect to congressional investigations and requests for information, I instructed my staff to provide full cooperation and respond expeditiously on a continuing basis to ensure you have the information you need to conduct your critical oversight. In my testimony before you today, I will provide details on the Secret Service's advanced security planning for the Butler Farm Show site. Facts as we know them regarding the incident itself, known breakdowns in executing the security plan and corrective actions that the agency is taking to ensure that nothing like this 
happens again. But I do not believe that inadequate time to plan for this event was a factor in the failure. As you saw in my written statement, I am prepared to provide an overview of the security planning leading up to and during the July 13th attack. However, I would like to point out that based on what I know right now, neither the Secret Service counter sniper teams nor members of the former president's security detail had any knowledge that there was a man on the roof of the AGR building with a firearm. It is my understanding those personnel were not aware the assailant had a firearm until they heard gunshots. Prior to that, they were operating with the knowledge that local law enforcement was working an issue of a suspicious individual prior to the shots being fired. I regret that information was not passed to Congress and the public sooner with greater frequency. And I fear this lack of information has given rise to multiple false and dangerous conspiracy theories about what took place that day. And I want to debunk these theories. Let me address one conspiracy directly. The Secret Service counter sniper neutralized the assailant within seconds after the assailant fired his weapon. That counter sniper had full discretion to use deadly force to stop an attacker and did not need to seek authorization to fire. I am immensely proud of the selfless dedication of our employees to the mission. Every day across the globe, the men and women answer the call to protect our nation's leaders, and the standard is no fail for a reason. During our current high operational tempo, I want and I need to ensure that the Secret Service workforce are uplifted so they can focus on carrying out the mission. They have my full support, and I'm confident in their abilities to ensure the safety and security of the people we protect. They are worthy of trust and confidence, and they deserve your support, as well as the support of the American people. Chairman Peters, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Paul, Ranking Member Graham, and members of the committees, thank you for the opportunity to testify at this joint hearing. I will submit the remainder of my statement for the record, and I will answer your questions.